church is for this reason. People want to hear the word of God. They've got this thing inside them. I know I'm going to pray for my <laughs> um, So this is the reason they want to reach out. And that's part of our job as well. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, let us pray. Our God in heaven, blessed be your name. Please let that Holy Spirit come down on us today and bring us all great understanding of your word and of the duty we have to you. Amen. Okay. So what we have here is the title of the service is The Lord is His Name. Okay. So the Bible says, Seek him that make it the seven stars and Orion. And turneth the shadow of death into morning, and maketh the day dark. These are things that God does. When we have problems, look to them. Okay? They call it the waters of the sea. He poureth them on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. If we have a problem, do we go to man-made things? For example, do you think we're going to find the answer in the bottom of a bottle? Are we going to find the answer with these drugs and these things like this? Or with amusements that keep our brain occupied? And we're all guilty of this stuff. Although I've never tried drugs myself, I've never touched any of them. I have seen people that have when I worked in the clubs. Now what happens? They get very high for a little while. And you see this on TV. What you don't see is afterwards it comes down. Deep, deep depression afterwards. Nothing that you do will, will fill this gap that God, uh, this need for God is nothing. So we don't turn to these things. We don't turn to worldly things. We turn to God. I am the Lord. That is my name. And, I, and my glory, my glory, I will not give to another. Okay? So if it's something great happens, okay, it's not Allah Buddha, it's not meditation, trances, it's not it's God. Okay? Neither my praise to graven images. Okay? These idols that people make, or rosary beads, or things like this, these are not from God. Okay? Now Jesus taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. So who is God? He's, he's, he's being glorified of all, Jesus. Okay? And God is saying, I won't give my glory to another. So he's saying that Jesus is God. If I don't get, I will not give my glory to another. Okay. Now we begin the sermon. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God in Israel, of God of Israel, but not in truth or in righteousness. Okay. If you call yourself a Christian, okay, you can bring shame if you're not actually one. Okay, you can bring shame to the to, to the name of God. Okay, not in truth or in righteousness. You're not really a Christian. Not in truth. I go to church once a year. Have you read the Bible ever? No. But I'm a Christian. You see, you'll bring shame when that happens. Okay? Not in righteousness. Like the song mentioned now. Okay? They call themselves of the holy city and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. So we have here that they're calling themselves holy. But what they're doing is, in fact, bringing shame to God. Okay? And God has seen this because he sees everything. In the book of Revelation, he continually says, I am none of thy works. I know the things that are going on. I know. And he's talking to the churches. Because I knew that thou art obstinate and thy neck is an iron sinew. You're not changing. House of Jacob just means Israel is that thing. We were grafted in. So it does apply to us. I knew that you're obstinate, people. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Because it came to pass, I showed it thee. Lest thou should say, my idol has done them. Okay? 
and my graven image and my molten image has commanded them. Brothers and sisters, if something good or bad has happened in your life, it's only because God has been there. If there's evil in your life, that's God trying to rein you in and bring you back because you've gone off the path. With these things, you've seen and that th thou has heard, see all this and will not declare it. God's done a miracle in your life and you won't declare it. I know that uh, our sister Eleni at the back, she witnessed the miracle and she wouldn't keep quiet about it. The same with Jim and many of you as well. If God has done a miracle in your life, declare it. Yeah. Okay? You've seen and you heard this miracle. Now declare it. I have shown the new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didn't know them. So when there's prophecies in the Bible and we see them come true, these are hidden things, okay? And, and they did come true. And you start to see stuff in the Bible. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. With the Christians in your life, with, with, with events in your life, you'll see. It's the furnace of affliction. When you suffer, you come out more purified. Because I'll tell you what will happen if you've never, ever suffered. Nothing ever you won't look back. You won't say, why has this happened to me? Maybe I'm doing something wrong in my life. You'll never do it. Unless something goes wrong, you won't question yourself and look at the world. So this is what happens. The furnace of affliction does this to you. It makes you better. For my own sake, for God's sake, even for my own sake will I do it. I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for me, God's saying. You are my people. Bring honour to me. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory to another. My name will be polluted. That guys, have you ever seen on, uh, some of you got Facebook. I know I got banned a long time ago. Some of you got Facebook. Have you ever seen this? Christian preacher gets caught doing this. And Christian preacher does, what are they doing? They're polluting God's name. And this is what's happening. Why am I telling you this, brothers and sisters? I'll tell you why. Because take warning that we don't pollute God's name. When people look at us, when we get cut off in traffic and we want to say something bad, okay, when someone bumps into us, when someone steals from us, when someone does evil to us, and we're very tempted to uh, bring shame to God's name and do something, people. Let's not do that. Okay? I hope that struck a chord with everyone in here. I know it did with me. Okay. Hearken unto me. Listen to me, Jacob and Israel. My called, my elect, my people, you. Okay? I am the first. I am also the last. Now, this is in Isaiah. I am the first and the last. Now we go to Revelation. Who is the first and the last? When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Who died and became alive? Who is the first and the last? The Bible is very clear. So for those people who will tell you Jesus isn't God, or there's no such thing as the Trinity, ask them to read their Bible properly and you'll see it in there. Okay. I have the keys of hell and of death. Now, we're in a situation where we, sometimes not us, maybe other churches, maybe us, okay? but we're in this situation where uh, for some reason, I thought we were last when we go to the next one. <laughs> See, what's happening? People aren't ready to meet God yet. When God comes, these people 
think they're saved. They think they've done enough. They thought that a few easy words and a quick baptism would do the trick. Okay? They're not ready. They're not ready to meet God yet. Sometimes you see good people in your life and they're taken up to heaven early. You know why? Some of them were prepared to meet God. They've done their job. Okay? Are we ready? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Woe unto you. Okay? To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. For those people that believe, uh, I can't wait for this day of the Lord. Are you sure? <laughs> it might not be good news for you. Have you got right with God? Have you fixed what was wrong with you? Have you done God's work? Okay? We're in that situation, brothers and sisters, where sometimes we haven't done enough yet. Okay? Now, I'm not saying works get you into heaven. They don't. You can repent on your deathbed for a lifetime of evil and you are saved. And the Bible says you are saved. But there are other types and they're not right with God inside you. Okay? They profess a lot of things, but they're not ready yet. Okay? Come to Bethel, it says, and transgress. So we're talking about the Bethel Church. Okay, you know with their great music, fantastic music. No preaching, just great music. A soft message, a weak message, without righteousness. Okay? Come to Bethel and transgress. At Gilgal, multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. Go through the motions at this fake place. Okay? Transgress, it says. You've transgressed. The people that go there. I have overthrown some of you. And this has happened to all of you, including me. I have overthrown some of you. Morning, my brother. Welcome. We get my brother a chair. Oh, we've got a spare chair. Fantastic. It's as spaced out as we can make it. <laughs> okay. So, come to Bethel and transgress. We know Bethel's a false church, and we know there's a new Bethel now, and that's a false church. Okay. Go there and transgress. Multiply your transgression. See if you're going to get away with this. Okay. I've overthrown some of you. I've, I've crossed you. I've, I've, I've done a lot. There's, there's big lists here. I haven't put them all in. Okay? As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning, you were going to burn in hell with them. I've saved you from the fire. I've given you a chance. A firebrand plucked out of the fire. Okay? You have not returned to me, saith the Lord. Okay? You haven't come back. I did things in your life that crushed you, that made you depressed. I took people out of your life that shouldn't have been there. I did that for your sake. I have done a lot of things that you haven't returned to me. These are the things that have happened. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to be your God. Scary words, and they should be scary words, because sometimes Christians need to be scared. Remember when we were children, a lot of your mothers, okay? How would you scare your children? Remember? I'm going to tell your daddy you were scared like this. But what did it do? It got you ready. Maybe you stopped doing those things. Maybe you stopped doing those naughty things. The same with life. Sometimes tribulation will come to straighten you out, to help you. Okay? I hate, I despise your feast days. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. What is God saying here? 
So it's very simple. This is an important thing. You're focusing too much on these things. Take now away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy words, of thy viols, violins. God's saying he doesn't want to listen to music. That's what he's saying. He's saying, don't focus on this stuff more than righteousness. He's saying, put your time into what actually needs to happen. Let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. This is what God wants more. More than good music, more than a fantastic building church. This is what God wants the most. This is what God wants to focus on. Righteousness. Let it flow all the time. I want good judgment. When we see, how did you feel? There was this thing on Facebook, I wasn't there. Well, what was this thing about this cop in America? They caught these cops doing bad things in America. How did we feel inside? We were burning with anger. Yeah? That's the Holy Spirit inside you. You feel like something's wrong. I'm angry because this injustice is happening. I want righteousness. You know why? Because God's living in you. And he doesn't like these things. You feel, sometimes when the police catch a bad guy, you feel good about it. You don't know why. You just feel good about it. I feel good because justice, righteousness has happened. Judgment. Judgment is a good thing. Because there's Christians out there that say, you can't judge anything at all. That's not what the Bible says. It says, judge righteous judgment. It doesn't say, don't judge anything ever again in your life. It's saying to judge, but do it righteously. And God likes these things. He likes judgment, righteousness, goodness. I want this stuff to flow. This matters more to me than solemn assemblies and noise of songs. These are the things that are really important to me, the righteousness. Okay. Come ye near unto me. Hear you this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time it was, there I am. Now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Okay? Sometimes the preachers, sometimes the people around you, okay? They are sent by the Holy Spirit. You will have this Holy Spirit inside you at that time to speak. Judgment and righteousness. One of the reasons I love my brother Jim, and he knows I love him because of this, is because he offers his mouth, and he says righteousness. He said to me once, I said to this man, uh, you know, you're an idiot. And I sat there thinking to myself, I know that man, and I know he is. <laughs> it was righteousness and judgment. Sometimes people make you uncomfortable because they say the truth. Good morning. Look. Morning. When this righteousness flows as a stream, God is happy. Okay? God and his spirit have sent you. Okay? Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the guy who's going to save you, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit. I'm teaching you what's right. Who leads you by the way that you should go. I am that God. The Bible is God speaking. The word of God is that. Sometimes for a preacher, sometimes for a friend. But that righteousness is there. And that's what God wants. He wants that righteousness. There is stuff in this sermon that's going to make me ashamed. Let me be ashamed and be a better person. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments, uh, which leadest thee by the way that you should go. O oh, that thou hearken to my commandments, they had, uh, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. God wants this righteousness to flow out of the churches, out of his people. You that put away the evil day and cause the seat of violence to come near, Not somebody else's fault. It's easy to blame God. 
It's easy to blame Iran. In the Garden of Eden, I'm going to tell you what happened. He comes, God comes, and he says, and you know what's happening. Whenever God asks you a question, you have the answer. If you see God asking someone a question, does he? He walks up to, <laughs> he walks up to Adam, and he says, what's happened with this fruit I told you not to eat? He says, she did it. The woman that you gave me, God's for it. <laughs> no. She, what about, what about pointing the finger at yourself? Eve wasn't there to hear God say that. She wasn't creating that. He was. He should have known better. Okay. But this is what we do. We blame everyone for not being righteous. We don't blame ourselves, do we? Take responsibility, people. Okay. If you've done something wrong, confess your sin. Don't just say, I'm sorry for whatever I've done. Confess your sin. I'm sorry for this exact thing I said to you. That is righteousness. Okay? Okay, you cause the seat of violence to come in. The bad things that are happening are your fault. They lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches. How many times have we stretched ourselves upon our couches instead of doing something righteous? I was guilty of this last week and got punished. I stretch myself on the couch. Okay? I lie upon beds of ivory and eat the lambs out the flock and the calves out the midst of the stall. You've got a great life. Don't you? Everything you want, you've got a bed of ivory. I don't know what that would cost these days. Millions. But you've got it well. You eat well. You lie down on your couch. It's made me feel guilty. There's always something more you can do for God. Okay? They chant the sound of the VO and invent themselves instruments of music like David. You see, uh, you have this in churches. Sometimes they just chant and chant and repeat and repeat and think they're doing something godly. That's not true. There's, a, there's a, I think there's places in Tibet they do it and stuff like that. They just chant and chant and chant. Okay. They drink wine in bowls. Okay? And anoint themselves with the chief chief ointments. They're spending all their time on themselves. They are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph, of Israel, of God's people. They're not grieved. They're not upset. Why? Does God have to take that away from you so that we change? Does God have to take away my comfy couch, my place to live, so that I change? Or should I change? Before he does that, before the seed of violence comes, before God has to act to change me, because I'm not a God, Jesus isn't going to let us go out of his hand easy. He wants to change us, bring us back. Okay? Therefore, they shall go captive with the first that go captive. The first people that are going down are these people in their couches. Okay? And the banquet of them that stretch themselves shall be removed. Do you want God to take away all the comfortable things you have in your life? Or do you want to change now? Do you want to? The Lord has sworn by himself, said the Lord of hosts, I abhor the excellency of Jacob and hate his palaces. Therefore, I will deliver up the city that is therein. I abhor this excellency that people think they are. These couches that people get comfortable on. You've done nothing for God, Mario. I abhor this. I abhor this couch that you're comfortable on. This is wrong. We need to change this thing, okay? Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come that the Lord's house should be built. I'm not going to fix the church yet. It's not the right time. This painting, these things need to be done a long time. I didn't do them. These church things, we're fixing this now. Tracks, new tracks need to be printed out. I think the shops are all open, even the printers now. They must be. They must be open by now. So there's no excuses there. Okay? 
The shops that sell the paint, they're open now. Okay, is it time for you, O oh ye, O oh you people, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lies waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. People, it's getting hot in here. If you need drinks, it's okay. I won't take you the wrong way. Is it time for you to be comfortable at home while the church of God is not comfortable? It's lying waste. It's lying waste. Okay? We heard last week that people wanted people to go out there and preach the word. There's people that wanted me to condemn and have a go at women preachers. But I felt sad instead because there were not enough men to lead. So I don't condemn the women preachers. I thank them. I disagree with it. But I thank them. You know why? Because more men should be out there doing it. More men should be taking it up. I'm crying because there's a lack of men. There's a lack of followers. There's a lack of power out there. Pick up the sword and fight. Out there, people's souls are getting lost all the time. Corrupted by television. Corrupted by these things. Corrupted by some of the Disney Channel stuff that they do. Where they dress up little kids like adults. Makes you want to be sick. And the world is like this at the moment. Because people won't fight. They won't stand up. They're too comfortable on their couch. And the house of God lies in waste. What do we do? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways, people. I'm not having a go at this church. I'm having a go at the world. We are here in the church. We preach. We teach. We sing to God. We sing praises. We're halfway there. We're saved. And we're all coming to heaven. But, people, Let's still consider our ways. There's more we can do. Okay? You've so much. You've worked a lot. You, you all feel this. You've worked and worked and worked. But it's like a bag full of holes. You bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You're never satisfied. They clothe you, but none of you is warm, really. And he that earns wages... Earneth it to put it into a bag with holes. I've got bills. The money goes here, the money goes here, the money. But you're always going to have these problems. <laughs> There's never going to be a time when you are doing this. God's got to keep you on that tribulation level so you stay close to him. Because if you see like Solomon, who had gold palaces, gold, 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 he lost his way. God could give you everything and you would fall by the wayside. Better don't give me and I stay close to you. This is what I want. What I want the most is God. Everything else second. This is how we should be. And this is what we want the world to know. Okay? Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Okay? Go up to the mountain and bring wood. And build the house and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, says the Lord. Go and get your building materials and fix the church. Guess where I'm going off the church today. I'm going to get the paint. I'm going to finish the outside. I'm going to get that thing there and make it nice. It's all going to do. Then we're going to take pictures of the place. Then we're going to give out tracts. And we are actually going to give out tracts. We're going to do something to God. We don't have room. We'll figure it out. I'll move this and I'll step back. Whatever I need to do a little bit more, I'm going to do that a little bit more. I want to consider my ways because my ways aren't right before God. I don't feel right before God. I don't. There's always more I can do. Don't let me ever be comfortable on that couch. You look for much and low, it came to little. You brought it home, I did blow on it. You know why? Because my house is laying waste. You forget that that money comes from God. 
that everything good came from God. And you run every man to your own house. You don't care. You just go home and relax. Put the TV on. You don't care if the house is very nice. I have to change. We have to change this. But more than that, if we are changed in this, let's change everyone else. This is what we have to do. Okay? We prepare to meet God. Are we prepared to meet God? Are we ready? If he came today, would you be happy, hand on heart, I've done all I can for you, Jesus? If you're not, let's change. Okay? If the wicked will turn from his sins that he's committed and keep thy statutes, it doesn't matter what the guy's done wrong, if he repents, okay? He will turn from sins that he's committed and keep my statutes and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live and shall not die. Do we want to live and not die? Yes. That's what we want. We want to change. We want to be better people. And if there's something wrong with me, tell me. If there's something wrong with someone else, tell them. Because you're their friend if you tell them. You're a better friend. You're a better partner. You're a better husband and wife. You're a better everything. And if you tell a stranger, you're even better than all of them. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. Jesus, who sits at the right hand of the Lord, is talking about. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. They're brave. The right hand of the Lord. You represent Jesus. Jesus was brave. Let's us be brave as well. He does valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. What type of death do you have? If you don't have Jesus, I've seen. Yeah, save my sister, save it. It's okay. It's valid. Whatever life you think you're living, it's valid. Maybe you have 100 million. You've got nothing. Because what are you going to do with that? You can't live forever with it. And you help some poor person. Have you gone to Suresh and given him a job? And you fix the house of the Lord. What have you actually done with the hundred million? Have you bought another painting? Remember, we saw that painting, one hundred million for a painting, and it looked rubbish. I could take a better picture on my phone. One hundred million. I don't laugh at the man who sold it to me. I laugh at the man that bought it. And the man that bought antiques. This is an old Victorian. Who cares if Victoria was using it to write letters on? Who cares? How does that help? It doesn't help me. Instead of the 200,000 you spent, maybe go and give someone a sandwich. Maybe the homeless people that you walked past to go to Sotheby's, you know, maybe you could have given them something. I will declare the works of the Lord. We're coming to the end, people. I know I went on a bit longer than usual today. But this is what happens when you preach. And this is going to happen to some of the men here. And I pray that every single one of you, every single one of you, opens a church. If you have to leave, leave us here, I'm going to cry. But I'm going to be crying with happiness because you did it to open a church. I'm not one of those people that needs a massive congregation or wants a massive congregation. I'd rather do righteousness by God. I don't want to be popular with men. I want to be popular with God. That's it. That's it. That's it. These are things that come from the Holy Spirit who sent you. You can pick anyone. They can look like anything. Okay? And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that Day. Remember we say the day of the Lord. We did this before. Okay. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. You see these things. These things are going to happen. God is good. The Bible has never been wrong. The God has never been wrong. And when God warns you, he's not warning you because he hates you. He's warning you because you need to be worthy. Don't you want to be worthy? When Jesus comes, I want to be happy. 
that man has walked past this church so many times, always at the same time he wants to come in. Needs to get through the door. We can do better. As good as you think you are, you can do better. There's always something more you can do. Now, we're staying here today. We're going to finish off the outside of the church. Why? Because I'm really scared. I want to live. I want to live for Jesus. I want to take that. And I want to weep. <laughs> I don't want to be dead inside. Let me go back to that one. I shall not die but live. I don't want that. So, let's pray. Uh, I felt shame in my heart when I was writing this song. Shame that I want to confess to everybody here. So I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I don't want to be on that couch. I don't want to waste my life. I want to live and declare the works of the Lord. I want to live. I want to be out there with you. I want to do something for you. I don't want to be lazy no more. I want to preach a proper word that's unpopular, but popular with you. I never want to be a people pleaser. I never want to make other people happy. I just want to make you happy. I want to live my life for you, live through you. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to try harder to reach out to the world. <laughs> Spirit to come down and empower every single person in this church. The Holy Spirit of God be with you always. For the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sorry, let me get this out of your way for good, for a minute.